All right, in this video, we're going to show you how you can segment anything from Meta AI. So the agenda for today is we're going to start off by going over briefly some of the classical segmentation methods. We're going to go over the segment anything repo, show you the segment anything website that they have available, go into the environment setup to get your coding started, and jump right into the coding. So in the coding portion, we're going to talk about using the small model, we're going to use a large model, then we're going to use a large model tuned version, and then jump into a single mask where we could just select the specific part of the image we want and get the mask for that. So we're going to be using this nature picture here, and then here is going to be an example output that we will see by the end of this video. If you're new to my channel, I teach robotics, controls, machine learning, and computer vision. So subscribe to learn more. Check out my playlist on computer vision using AI, OpenCV in Python, ROS2, Git, Python, C++, SolidWorks, mechanical design, and here's my GitHub that follows along with it. So we have four classical segmentation methods that we talked about in the past. So we have the HSV color space segmentation, we have the histogram back projection, we have the watershed segmentation and graph cut segmentation. So I have videos that cover this. This one is on the HSV where I'm segmenting a cat. This one I'm using the histogram back projection to segment the background and the foreground. This one is using the watershed segmentation to get parts of the tree. And then this one here is using the graph cut again to get the foreground and background with some manual intervention. Okay. So here is a segment anything repo that you can go ahead and check out. This right here is the overview of the architecture for the segment anything model. You have an image, you pass it into image encoder that goes through an image embedding and then you go through a convolution mask, and you have a mask decoder and a prompt encoder. The prompt encoder can take in points, box, or text, and then from there it's going to output the valid mask with some score. Okay, so that's the general process. And here you can see these are some examples that they provide in the repo. And all of this is trained on this data set provided here. So you can see here there's a bunch of images. 50,000 images, and these have all been annotated and trained on. So there's a couple of pages of trained data. You could go ahead and look through that. So you could see there's a lot of different variations and level of complexity and details, as you can see here. And here is the GUI application that you can use to test out your segment anything model. So I've uploaded my image here. This is the Tesla pick that I've been using in my previous one. And there's different options. You could do the hover and click option where you could click on it. If you left click, it's gonna choose the area that it's trying to segment. And let's say you want a certain area to be excluded. You could right click and it's gonna show a pink area. Then it's gonna exclude a certain part of the area. So it's gonna to try to guess best on your, uh, based on your seed points what area you're trying to select. And you could reset here or undo. You could also do the box everything where you could uh, draw a box and segments out, as you can see here. So that's another neat way. And then you also have everything which tries to uh, segment everything in this picture. So you could see it identifies a bunch of points and it'll do the segmentation for you. Okay, so that's how you could play around with the GUI um, from their website. So for the coding, we're gonna jump into VS Code. So if you look through the requirements, there's a requirement that Python has to be greater than 3.8, PyTorch has to be greater than 1.7, and Torch Vision has to be greater than 0.8. So that is the setup that you need. What I did here was I created a virtual environment using Python 3.11, so you could go ahead and use that and follow along. These are the pip installs that you need. To, you need to do this for the specific install to get Torch Vision and CUDA if you have CUDA available. This one here is to get the segment anything repo. And then here is to get OpenCV Python and some other additional modules that you'll need. Okay, so after you do that, you want to go ahead and download the models. There's different model types. There's a VITH and there's a VITB. 
you call it vit h, vit b, um, but I'm gonna play around with the small and large models in this repo. So here is my Python script that I'm using to do the different tests with the different models. So the first one that we're gonna be doing is the test small model. So if we go inside and look at the test small model, what I do is I've created a segment anything class and we're defining the type of model we're using. We're gonna load in the image and then generate the mask. So let's take a look at this model type here. So you can see I've defined an enum for my model class. So I've defined the smallest model to be the vit b, and this is the path of the model that I've downloaded. And then I have my vit h, which is my large model, and this is the path for it. Okay, so if I go back into my function, you can see I call my segment anything class. So in my segment anything class, we start off by calling the constructor here. So this constructor, what it does is it's gonna load my model for me and it's gonna use the SAM checkpoint, which is the model that we're using, the model value. And then we have the model name. So basically the path and the name. So after I do that, I create a SAM object here by passing in this line. And if for some reason you have CUDA that you want to use, you have the option to do that. Uh, for me, only my small model works on my GPU because I have a weak GPU. So you can edit this part if you want to use your GPU. Okay, so that is a step for uh, my segment anything. And then here I have my load model function that I call. So inside load model, I'm gonna get the image path, read in the image, convert my BGR to RGB, and then I'm gonna plot it. So if, when I plot it, I'm gonna see my image. So I could go ahead and run that and you can see my image show. So you can see my image has popped up here, okay? Okay, so after I load the image, we're gonna call the generate masks function. So inside here, what we're gonna do is uh, call the SAM automatic mask generator, and we're gonna have a mask generator here, and then we're gonna call the generate function by passing in our image, and this is gonna return a list of our masks. So when we do that, we're gonna plot our image, and then we're gonna call the show ands function. So what this function does is it's going to get all the um, annotations all the mask regions and then it's going to sort it and based on the sort it's going to sort it based on um, the area here as you can see so after it sorts everything it's going to do some random coloring and it's going to give us uh, the and segmentation will will give us the actual mask for the area that's being segmented which will be true or false um, depending on if that pixel is part of the mask or not part of the mask and then what we're gonna do is overlay that image onto our original image. And then here we're gonna return the mask to do some processing. So here we're gonna plot, this part is gonna plot the image with the mask overlaid. And then the second part is going to plot only the mask. Okay, so let's go ahead and see that in action. Okay, so you can see this image here is the mask that we found. So you can see that there's certain areas that's shaded over with different color. So that is the identified mask area. And this one here is the mask only image. So you could better see the different masks that are available. Okay, so this one is for the small model. And now we could go ahead and do the same thing. This one here, we're gonna run uh, the large model, so test large model, the only difference is now we're passing in the vit h. So here we've generated the output for the large model. It takes a long time to run because I have a weak GPU. Um, but if we take a look at the results for the vit h, you can see that this right here is the output for the vit h, which is pretty good. What you'll notice is that the vit h is gonna have more details um, based on because it's a larger model. So this one is a combined version and then we have the vit h, this one is with the mask only. So if we take a look again at the vit h, you can see this is vit h, the large model, and then here is a small model. So if you look closely, you can see the large model captures more detail. Uh, if you look at the mask only version, you can see a little bit better. So this one is a mask only. And then this one is the, or I mean, this one is a large model and this one is a small model. So you can see clearly the large model has a lot more details. So if we go back to here, we're gonna um, run, if we run the tuned model, so what the tuned model does is if we go into here, uh, we're gonna have a new function called generate tuned masks. So in here, you actually get to 
set some of the settings that you want for your tuned model. Okay, so you could play around with these values here. These are some values that um, the website suggested, but you have points per side, the predicted IOU threshold, stability core threshold, crop number of layers, number of point downscale factor, and the min mask region area. So you could try to play around with these values to try to get more or less regions segmented. It's going to be a little bit of art because that's how tuning is in general. But you could go ahead and look at right here. This is the combined version. So if you look at the combined version, it's a lot, it's even way more details as you can see, especially in the clouds and some of the bottom area. So if I compare the large tune model with the large model, you can see that there's a difference in the details. It's a lot obvious, it's a lot more obvious in the clouds. So look there, you can see the difference, okay? If we look at the mask only version, you can see the mask only, this is output. You can see tons of details, whereas this one is a lot less. So again, you can focus on the clouds. You can see all that details that's showing up. Okay, so that's the tuned, tuned model results. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about doing the small model single mask test. So this one right here, because we're using a small model, it's gonna be faster. But if I jump into here, we have a new function called generate single mask that takes in the coordinate as your input. So here the coordinate is gonna be um, uh, the x, y value. So again, we're gonna call our SAM automatic mask generator, and then we're gonna get our mask. And then from here we have our mask, we're gonna loop through the list of our masks. And we're gonna first check if the point that we're interested in is inside the bounding box. So mask bounding box will give us the x, y, the height and width of our box. And then from there, we have the function, you could take a look at this, but basically it just checks if it's inside the values of the min and max x and y value. So here, if it is, we're gonna plot the image and then we're gonna, um, what we're gonna do here is set the colors to be true or false, black and white. And we're gonna make our mask into an RGB three channel so that we can save it. So that's what we're gonna do. So after you do that, what we're gonna see is that um, we're able to select a specific area. So in this case, we looked at the small model. So if I open the small model again, I just said, I wanna pick out this region here. So I found the coordinates for this region. So after I found the coordinates, I took the mask from that region and plotted it. So that's how you can get the specific region of your mask, okay? And here you can see our program up and running. So you can see 300, 700, my coordinate is this blob here. And if I close this, you'll see the output of our single image is, is the one that we showed earlier, okay? So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.